Hello everyone, I'm Steve, Mark's at work, and this is Smokey, Steve, and Mark. Either welcome or welcome back, and happy Thursday. Almost the weekend. We're getting there, we're getting there. So I hope everyone's well, everyone's safe, look after yourselves, look after the people around you. We're all in this together. We're not all experiencing it the same way, but um, we're all in this together, okay? There's my happy PSA for the, for the day. So, today we're going to continue um, life after caretaking. I guess. Um, for anyone who's not familiar, who's just popped in now, uh, I've been following a channel and doing reviews sort of on a channel for about, I'm going to say 12 weeks or so. Uh, the channel was initially called Cynthia and Thomas Belmont, and now it's called Jersey Girl Journals. Um, Cynthia and Thomas are a couple. Tom, Tommy uh, passed away about a month, I want to say about a month ago, maybe, maybe a little over a month ago. He had cancer and he passed not suddenly, but he, he deteriorated pretty fast. So Cynthia is now a widow, and she hasn't been single since she was 20, maybe? She got married very young. So, and she's pushing 50, like six months or something like that. So she's experiencing life very differently now. She's running into all sorts of issues with money, with transportation, with insurance, with access to food, um, allegedly. And all sorts of other things. So she's continuing to make videos, and YouTube, she says, is her only source of income at the moment. So the videos are being, you know, cranked out pretty fast. She's trying all new kinds of content to see what sticks. You know, sweating to the oldies, um, which I used to do when I was a, a kid. Um, I was a very fat kid. Mm, what else was she doing? Mukbangs. Most of them were tuna and minestrone soup from Progresso laden with hint dropping that she wanted more soup at any rate. Uh, so that's where her channel was kind of going at the moment. Now there's a couple things that she's been accused of that, I, well, I've, I've accused her of too. Um, and that's like e-begging and manipulating her audience to try to get her needs met, to try to get things out of them. Now we all, if we're monetized or, or whatever, um, get something back from YouTube financially. You know, if you have AdSense, you know, you get that back. Uh, super chats. People can, you know, buy your merch. There's a bunch of other ways people can do it. But there's also getting actual goods from viewers or actual cash from viewers. There's another way to do that. Um, and people who are generous, people who feel sympathetic, um, people who are um, tenderhearted and have disposable income may reach out and, and do that. So I don't consider folks who do that to be suckers necessarily, but are they seeing things as they really are? Are they being taken advantage of? Are they getting the whole picture or are they just coming into the middle of it? So the three things I kind of nailed down that would maybe motivate a person to e-bag per se, um, they were need, I won't say needy exactly, but if they were in need, we'll say, eh, we'll say needy. Um, they were greedy or if they were lazy. So, in terms of, and we'll we'll talk around Cynthia, but again, she didn't invent e-begging. There's this other name that keeps coming up, Elvis Travels. I watched a couple videos. I, I didn't see any. He was very honest and upfront, I thought, about his, his gig. You know, I, his candor was refreshing. I'll say that. Approve, disapprove, I, no judgment. I, I thought his, he was refreshing. That's as much as I'll say about Elvis Travels. The The absurdity of what was going on was was funny to me. Um, but needy in terms of, let's say Cynthia's kind of a needy person. She always has a problem with something and is always looking for help with something, but also has a problem with the help that she usually gets. Um, Amazon Fresh Care Package from Christine. I need food, the food comes. I can't eat this, it's too high in calories. Your heart was in the right place, honey. So. That kind of falls into somewhere between being, I think, a little mentally ill and a little immature. And I don't mean immature like the 13-year-old Japanese, 13-year-old girl, like Japanese toys that she likes. I mean immature like it's a not a grown-up way to look at the world, kind of. You know what I mean? Um, her situation sucks. It's a really bad time to be stuck in it. But we have to be responsible for ourselves. Some of us build networks of family and friends so that when times are hard, we have people to lean on. Cynthia um, chose not to do that. She had a small family and then chose to make it even smaller. So she really only has herself and her viewers to rely on. Um, because she's painted that picture that she's on her own, she looks like 
Well, she looks needy. And again, people who feel compelled to reach out will, will give her stuff. And she doesn't make it confusing about the stuff she needs. She will list off, this is my last can of tuna. This is my, I only have three eggs left. Three precious eggs left. Um, I'm out of sun kissed. It, there's a, this is the soup I like. And then bam, the next day a case of soup shows up. You know. Uh, so, for needy people in hard times. Now things uh, obviously are different for all of us. Uh, during hard times for needy people, you know, we have a soup kitchen right down the street. Now obviously it's closed right now. They're still handing out bag lunches once a day. Uh, there's other resources that are available through the government, through the community, to 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 do that, um, to find yourself some food, <laughs> especially in the position she says she's in. Um, it's possible her neediness stems from the fact that she is actually afraid to go outside, that maybe when she said she was afraid of being kidnapped, that that was a little deeper than I read it. I thought it was kind of like, afraid to be kidnapped, she probably doesn't want to walk a block. And that might, that might very well be true, and we'll talk about that later. Um, but maybe she really was afraid. Who knows? So, I don't know. She won't leave the apartment. So, whatever is going on with her, whatever situation she's in, it's it's incapacitating to some degree. So, that would be her, a needy person, in my opinion. Someone who is just, everything's wrong, she has kind of the victim mentality, and I need this, and I need that, and poor me, poor me, poor me. The next kind of take would be greed, being a greedy person. I need more stuff because I want more stuff because I deserve more stuff because I'm me. Um, hints of, of stuff like that is, it comes into like entitlement, kind of. Like, I'm owed these things. I deserve these things. Um, if I don't get a package for two days, it's worth mentioning because I deserve to get packages every day. Um, it's it's part of the... I, I, I've said before, I don't think about gifts from viewers or products they would want us to try or anything like that as income. It's not like, well, this month we made $150 in ads and $50 in groceries. Like, that's... You know, like, that's not how it works, I don't think. But, again, we all, we all function differently. I'll give her you know, the respect for that, but, and I can, you know, I would commend people who saw someone they thought was hungry sending food. I mean, that's, that's not to be sniffed at, but I don't, I feel like they're being played. I feel like they're being manipulated. <laughs> um, another thing, adding an Amazon wish list to, um, the description of a video or PayPal or Venmo or anything like that, which says to the person, I want you to consider giving me money. I want you to consider buying me something. I want you to, you, you know what I mean? Um, watching my video is not enough. I need these things, and here's a list of the things I need. I didn't even know what an Amazon wish list was initially. I thought, apparently it's like an ongoing bridal registry for people that aren't even getting married. You just put all this crap there <laughs> that you want, and maybe someone can get it for you. Um, I thought it was a place that you just didn't have to look for the same shit again. And you could just go there and get it yourself. Um, the things that are on her Amazon wish list are, I find curious, because it's in multiples. There's multiples of each thing that are requested, and there's descriptions under the things. There was one, I want to say it was for cat treats, cat food, something like that, and under the description had something, I'm paraphrasing, please, but, um, these are Checker's favorite treats, Checker's the cat. Tommy used to love giving them to him. That sucks. <laughs> that, I, I, that may be very true. That may be 100% true. But the place where it's at, and I mean, it's meant to pull at your heartstrings. That's so manipulative, even if it's true. The placing of that is manipulative, I think. Um, and... The gift cards. There's gift cards on there. Now, Cynthia doesn't leave the house and doesn't give them away. What else do you do with a gift card that you're not giving away and you're not using? Sell it, maybe? I don't know. Just, that's a guess. But what what would you do with a bunch of gift cards? I mean, I've sold gift cards. Sometimes you get one, you know, like, maybe as a, a gift from someone, like, on Christmas. We would get one from a relative out of state who doesn't know that the closest 
you know, uh, Sonic is four hours away. So you try to get rid of it. But it's curious to me that there's so many there. And again, kind of the mentality of why spend mine when I can spend yours. I remember there was a sequence of videos. It was within maybe 10 days of each other. Somebody had put money into her PayPal. Why? How do I know? She told everybody in the video just so they couldn't, wouldn't be confused about how to do it. Um, and then it was a series of videos later. There was a Macy's Beauty Box. So we all deserve a little treat now and then. Okay. But when times are tough, those treats get smaller, <laughs> usually, and further apart. Because, you know, we all have to do what we need to do to get by. I mean, that's, that's just the way it is. And hard times are not just happening to her. I, I think she might be in the same position as maybe Amberlynn Reed, maybe Chantal, maybe a couple other folks who think that this entire set of circumstances of having to be shut in and isolated is only happening to them. Or that they have it just a little bit harder than everybody else. Just a little bit harder than everybody else. I know we all have hard times, but it's a little bit harder for me because. So again, there's this little entitled bit that comes with it. And then the greed kind of comes after. So again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm just talking out my ass. But this observations, you know. Um, laziness. Now... I have a tendency, let me just put this out there very clearly, I have a tendency to, um, on the extreme, make excuses for people, but generally um, give people too much of a break or try to attach a mental health diagnosis to a set of behaviors to try to explain it and give it context. It's entirely possible that a person can just be lazy and entitled. Freud, I think, said sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. It doesn't mean anything. It just is what it is. And so it's entirely possible that that's what people are observing here. And that's what people who send um, emails to us and messages to us are feeling like. They may have been supporters of her who have been duped also, or who feel like they've been manipulated or had, um, who maybe sent her something and Cynthia complained about it on camera or said thank you to whoever sent this, I don't remember, and they felt insulted. Um, but the the lazy entitled part is is a little different. Well, first of all, the entitled part is I'm owed these things. They I deserve these things because I'm on YouTube. I'm supposed to get all this stuff. So and the re and the fact that I'm not means something's wrong, not with me and the content I'm making and my channel, but something's wrong with the audience. So, uh, laziness as far as it's too much work to do something. There was things of this. Now, she just spent months as a caretaker. The quality of the care that she provided, we will not discuss. But she spent time as a caretaker, a 24-hour caretaker, except from the time when her husband, her late husband, was in the hospital. So, that's exhausting. And she's not a, a, a four-season athlete either. You know, she ha she deals with obesity and a bad leg, and scoliosis, and TMJ, and sinus infections, and ear infections, and she had a toe infection, and I think she has diverticulitis, and she's also had kidney stones, um, like all sorts of other stuff going on. Right now she has heartburn, I think. Tragic foreshadowing. Get the heartburn checked, because last time it was, didn't end well. Um, but she's not, she's never been a stellar housekeeper. Um, she would, cook things, she would say, I like to cook everything in one pan. Now, that sounds like it's efficient. It's lazy. I toe the line between efficient and lazy very often. And if you're persuasive, you know, in, and, you know, can milk your rhetoric, uh, you can convince someone that you're doing something a more efficient way. By doing it that way. I remember she would be making a HelloFresh dish. Because I've watched all her HelloFresh videos. I just, you know, back when I was more of a super fan, I would just put them on play and let them run. Uh, and she would take out like five steps of making a dish and just throw it all in one pan. She's like, I think it's silly to do it another way. So she never did have good, you know, ability to follow directions. But lazy. You know, Tommy probably never came home. To, she hated washing silverware, so he'd come home and eat off a paper plate with a plastic fork, you know, after working an eight-hour day. Um, and what was she doing all day at home? Editing videos, playing video games, watching Korean soap operas, 
and the guy has to come home and eat off a plastic fork because in the eight hours he was gone, she couldn't wash a fork. So there was accusations, definitely. And of course, the state of her home, which has been, <laughs> which has been widely discussed. The word hoarder is thrown out often, very often. Um, how, like, that she'll drop something and it's lost in the abyss. Like, I don't know where it goes. Uh, so that was pointed out that she was also lazy. Of course, the hoarding toes the line between all of them. I need this stuff to feel safe. I need more stuff. I deserve more stuff. It makes me happy. And then I'm too lazy to throw my old shit out. So that could run right through like a ray, right through all of them. So it's possible all three things in some, you know, weird way are going on too. Maybe that's actually what's happening. It's possible. So at any rate, I just wanted to share a few, a few thoughts on that. Um, as to continuing with the series, I think I'm going to keep on following up with this. Um, as of today, I haven't checked. Um, she hasn't posted a video. So there's, there's nothing more to go on. I don't follow through Cynthia's videos in the same way that I follow through when I'm going through with Chantal. Chantal, I watch all the videos and I take notes. God, forgive me. I have no life. I watch these videos and I watch infomercials. Sad. Sad. Um, but with Cynthia, I kind of, I take in what I can see and get the gist and kind of, is, is this a complaining video? Is this a begging video? Is this uh, everyone was out to screw me video? Is this an exercise video? You, there's always a gist. She doesn't switch plots too often in the middle of the video. So I follow them a little more loosely. And then there tends to be a theme that pops out. Something for discussion. Again, it's a jumping off point for discussion when, we, when we're watching Jersey Girl journals at this point. So. so thank you all for watching. Please do feel free to share comments down below. And please subscribe. Hit the bell and the like button on your way out. You can follow Mark and I on Facebook at Smokey Steve Space and Mark or on Instagram at Smokey Steve and Mark. Our email address and contact info is all listed down below. Thank you again for watching and we will catch up with y'all tomorrow. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Bye.